we haven't talked about planets in a while, so let's fix that. Today, I want to show you how the planets above our heads shape something we still use every single day, the seven-day week. And by the end, you'll understand why Tuesday is secretly Mars's day, why Friday is all about love, and why, for a brief moment in history, we almost had a ninth planet called George. Yeah, planet George. Stick around. In modern astronomy, there are eight planets. Easy, clean, scientific. But in the ancient world, a planet wasn't defined by size or orbit. A planet was anything that moved against the background of the fixed stars. If it wandered, it counted. That's it. By that definition, there were seven. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and get this, the sun and the moon. Now think about it. That's exactly seven. And it's no coincidence that there are seven days in a week. Let's walk through them. Sunday, easy, the sun's day. Monday, the moon's day, still obvious. Saturday, Saturn's day, straightforward. The other four are where it gets interesting. Tuesday, in Spanish, it's Martes, named after Mars, the god of war. In English, though, it comes from Tu, the Norse god of war, basically the northern version of Mars. So Tuesday is, in a roundabout way, Mars's day, Wednesday. In Spanish, Miracles, named for Mercury, the speedy messenger. In English, we borrowed from the Norse again Woden's day. Woden was associated with wisdom and travel between worlds, which overlaps nicely with Mercury's role. Thursday, in Spanish, Jueves, from Jupiter, the thunder-throwing king of the gods. In English, it's Thor's day. And what's Thor famous for? Thunder, lightning, a big hammer. Thor is basically the Norse counterpart to Jupiter, Friday. In Spanish, Viernes, after Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. In English, it's Frigg's day. Frigg was a Norse goddess of love and beauty, too. So English days are a mashup. Roman gods on one side, Norse gods on the other. But both traditions point back to those seven ancient planets. Now, this system worked fine for centuries until the mid-1500 second, enter Copernicus. He published a book that basically told everyone, you've got it wrong. The sun is not a planet. The earth is the one that moves. With that, two of the ancient planets, the sun and the moon,